Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel Dental Cafe. So today we are going to discuss about the maxillary nerve block that is nasopalatine nerve block about the posterior superior alveolar nerve block anterior superior alveolar nerve block and in general about the anesthesia is already discussed in the previous parts I'll share the link okay then begin with the nasopalatine nerve block as we all know in maxilla we have a six type of nerve block first one is the supraperiosteal then we have a infraorbital nerve block then posterior superior alveolar then we have a nasopalatine nerve block and the last one is a greater palatine nerve block in this video we are going to discuss about the nasopalatine nerve block so what is nasopalatine nerve block so this it is potentially highly traumatic injection it is a very, very painful nerve block and the minimum volume solution provides profound hard and soft tissue anesthesia in this nerve block you required a very minimum volume of solution as compared to the other type of nerve block now the indications of nasopalatine nerve block when the palatal soft tissue anesthesia is necessary for restorative therapy on more than two teeth so whenever there is a requirement of the extraction of the maxillary anterior teeth you have to give a nasopalatine nerve block so that the palatal side of the anterior maxilla uh, got anesthetized in such cases you need this type of block for pain control during periodontal or oral surgical procedure involving the pa uh, palatal hard and soft tissue now the contraindications of nasopalatine nerve block is inflammation or infection at the injection site then it is contraindicated then a smaller area of therapy when you have to deal with one or two teeth then local infiltration works very good in maxilla you don't need to give complete block now techniques of nasopalatine nerve block so first you have to clean the area with a dry sterile gauge then apply topical anesthetic for minimum one minute for painless insertion of needle then 27 gauge short needle and always remember bevel towards the bone is used then what is the area of insertion it's a parietal mucosa just lateral to the incisive papilla then the target area is the incisive foramen and the path of insertion is we'll put a needle at the 45 degree angle towards the incisive papilla and behind the incisive papilla we have a incisive foramen then we'll take a swab and apply a pressure to the area of the papilla and then we'll note a uh, ischemia and then slowly advance the needle towards the foramen we can do this procedure with the finger we'll apply a pressure and then we'll note a blanching or a ischemia then aspirate the needle if negative then only deposit solution slowly then wait for minimum three to five minutes before starting the procedure now we'll see how we'll perform this technique in a detail so first we'll clean the area with a dry sterile gauge because patient wants painless dental treatment then we'll apply topical anesthetic for minimum one minute such as xylocan jelly for painless insertion of needle because patient don't want to feel pain in any part of treatment because patient wants painless treatment in dental then we are going to use a needle and always remember the bevel of the needle is towards the bone and what is the bevel look at the figure we have a two type of needle two direction in which we will go for the insertion of the needle look at the tip of the first syringe in first syringe we have a bevel away from the palatal bone and in the next we have a bevel towards the bone second one is the correct method for deposition of anesthetic solution bevel always towards the palatal bone 
air towards the tissue not away from the tissue now the area of insertion is the incisive papilla so this is we have a incisive papilla in oval shaped structure and what is target area it's an incisive foramen so if you look at the figure the incisive foramen is beneath the incisive papilla or you can say incisive papilla is over the incisive foramen so this is the target area where we have to deposit the solution and through this foramen nasopalatine nerves and vessel emerges now how to locate foramen we'll take a swab and apply pressure in the area of incisive papilla which is oval in shape when you are going to apply a pressure in the area of papilla you will see a blanching or a ischemia as you can see in the figure you will see a some blanching occur around the papilla if you are noting a blanching then what you are going to do you are going to place a needle at the 45 degree angle towards the incisive papilla and how 45 degree angle because our anterior uh, maxillary teeth are at the angulation of somewhat uh 10 degree okay so you will make a an angle with uh, that angulation to the 45 degree angle towards the incisive papilla not at the 90 degree angle and slowly advance the needles towards the foramen and deposit the solution and then wait for 3 to 5 minute before starting the dental procedure so that the anesthetic solution will work completely this point is very important if aspirate is negative then only deposit the solution what means negative you uh, look at the figure you can see in syringe there is a blood it means if you are going to aspirate and there is a blood in the syringe it means aspirate is positive you are at the wrong position you have to change the position now the area anesthetized by the nasopalatine nerve block this is we have a incisive foramen as we all know so area anesthetized by the uh, nasopalatine nerve block is anterior portion of the hard palate bilaterally from mesial of right first premolar to the mesial of left first premolar it means between canine to canine palatal hard tissue is anesthetized by the nasopalatine nerve block shaded in the yellow color in the figure What are the signs and symptoms of nasopalatine nerve block? Subjective sym uh, symptoms: numbness in the anterior part of the palate. Objective: no pain during dental therapy. Then the advantages of nasopalatine nerve block is minimizes needle penetration and volume of solution. Minimizes patient discomfort from multiple needle penetration. At from uh, palatal tissue from canine to canine is anesthetized by the single. block now disadvantages of nasopalatine nerve block no hemostasis except in the immediate area of injection and this is potentially traumatic or painful and if you want to prevent this trauma and pain to the patient you want this procedure is more more painless then i have one tip and trick to prevent pain and if you want to know do comment on comment section i will make a separate video Now the complications of nasopalatine nerve block. Hematoma is possible but very rare. Ischemia and necrosis of soft tissue. This is very common. I hope this video is helpful for you to understand what is nasopalatine nerve block in very short and simple words. If you want to know more about the other type of anesthesia do comment in comment section and if you want clinical video how to perform nasopalatine nerve block then also comment in comment section and yeah don't forget to like share and subscribe my youtube channel and hit the bell icon for the latest video